Hey guys, Lewis here, and I have recently been playing the newly released Ghost of Tsushima. There are several cool animations and new eye effects throughout the game, but one thing that caught my eye was the disintegration of mission text after you had completed the said mission. It's not as explosive or as dusty as other text disintegration examples, and given the art direction within the game, I might think that these are supposed to be leaves or petals. After seeing this just a few times, I thought, I'm going to find out how to replicate that. So let's refer back to the game and see how exactly the texts break away. Now, I initially thought about using a particle simulator, and I think they've done that here because if you pay attention, you can see that the text itself doesn't actually disintegrate, but instead the particles generate and then there's somewhat of a linear wipe on the text. Now, I want to take that foundation and make it more organic. So this is what I have. Right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into Adobe After Effects to see how that is done. To start, I'm going to create a new composition. And while you can use kanji for symbols, uh, you can also use text. And I'm going to do that to slightly vary from the game and make something for myself. But to be in the style of the game, we will be placing the text vertically. We're then going to go into the effects panel and search for shatter as opposed to using any type of particle generator. As the name of the effect suggests, it does shatter whatever you've added it to, as opposed to gently crumbling and drifting off in the wind. So we're going to have to change a few things. The first is we're going to change the view to render so that we can see uh, the shapes. We're going to change the pattern to rhomboi. And out of all of the available shapes, the rhomboi is the closest to the shape of a leaf or petal. And by turning up the repetitions all the way to 200, we get plenty of leaves slash petals and plus the original rhombi shape becomes quite indistinguishable. Direction refers to the direction of the shape, not actually the direction of the shatter. So we're going to leave this as is, but we will come back to it a little later. We're going to reduce the extrusion depth to zero as we don't want any form of three dimensional shapes for this. We're going to come down to the force one panel and this is going to be one of two panels where we can give that text the ghost of Tsushima look. But before we do anything, let's reduce the strength from five to 0 0.25 because we don't want it to explode and shatter. We want the text to crumble and float away. And likewise, while we're here, we're going to open up force two and reduce the strength to zero, which is going to turn off that parameter. So now let's jump back up to the settings of force one and go through them. As noted in the game, the breakaway happens from the bottom of the kanji text. And oh, by the way, if this isn't kanji, uh, correct me in the comments. I think it is. But we're going to place the position of the force at the bottom corner so the shatter works its way up the text quite like a, the demolishing of a building. The radius defines the area that the force affects but we don't want this to happen all at once. Like I said I want to make sure that it looks like it's crumbling away or, or transforming into leaves bit by bit. So we're going to reduce this to 0.20 but we're going to press the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And basically then move forward a few frames and increase the radius until it starts to cover the entire text, but incrementally. Now I can't give you a specific number to use for each step because everyone's text will be smaller or larger depending on what you have written. But looking at mine, I've gone from 0.20 to 0.38 to 0.60. And this was within 22 frames. So 24 frames per second, it was nearly under a second for the entire text. To disintegrate. While the disintegration looks great, the physics simulation is completely wrong, so let's open the physics property. Rotation and tumble are intrinsically linked. The tumble sets which axis the pieces will rotate along, and the rotation speed dictates how fast those rotations are. So we're going to set this at 3 and bump up the rotation to 1. Likewise, we're also going to bump up the randomness to 1. The only downside is that we can't control the variant sizes of the pieces, so these will somewhat do that. Viscosity specifies how fast the pieces will decelerate after being blown apart, but we don't want that to happen. We just want our leaves to do their own thing. So we're going to turn this off completely. Mass variance will specify the weight, the theoretical weight of the pieces as they explode. So a larger piece is going to act heavier than a smaller piece and does not move or fly away uh, after the initial shatter. So we're going to bump this up to 100 and make it quite sporadic so some of the parts just operate independently kind of like how leaves would in the wind and finally and most importantly the gravity settings going by the game direction we're going to have our direction also at 90 degrees and we're going to reduce the gravity to 0.40 so it's more of a slow 
circle rather than an instant drag. To conclude all the settings on the shutter effect, we're going to go back up to the direction, move the playhead to the start of the animation, select the stopwatch, move to the end of the animation and bump up the direction a considerable amount. And this will give the shattered pieces better variance when they float away. So this is what we have. I think that could be rendered as is. It looks very natural. The pieces move fairly independent. However, we're going to give it that extra bit of finesse with a mesh warp. So go to the effects panel, search for the mesh warp uh, and add it to the text. We're going to increase the rows, columns and the perfection to 10. Now these adjustments are to be minimal and minute. We only want to add five or six to give the flow a slight bend like wind. And if you make the warp too large, it will be very apparent and look like all these bits and particles have been sucked into a vacuum within this one area. So let's play that back. Nice. Okay, so to finish the effect like Ghost of Tsushima, there is a subtle glow to the text. So we're just gonna add glow, change the glow based on alpha channels because there isn't any color. Change the radius to 75, adjust the colors to A and B colors, color loop into sawtooth A to B, and then change color A to a very, very light yellow. And this is the final result. So I will leave you with this, guys. And oh, hey, see this end card? I've actually just launched my Patreon, which has a monthly assets tier reward. And if you get in before the end of July, there are 10 gravitational end cards just like this. Catch you guys next time.